Nelson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Luken has certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. Hello and welcome to sunny Spain for round two of the World Cycle Cross Championship. Talavera de la Reina, southwest of Madrid, is steeped in history. And nearly 200 years ago, the French, Spanish and English did battle here. Are we in for another one? Well, there's only one way to find out, and if it's anything like the weather, it's going to be a scorch. We have glamour too, not just our flamenco lady, but in the shape of Belgium's tough girl, Kelly De Bruyne. In a man's world, she mixes it with the best. Round one kicked off in her homeland in Lommel. The deep sand as normal proved to be a real challenge and in these conditions even the best are caught out sometimes. One of those top guns to fall victim was Julian Veldman. We had a big crash on the, on the place uh, where we passed Dania Willemsen in, in the first heat. We, we touched him with the sidecar wheel on his rear wheel and it was uh, yeah, a crash with full speed, so uh, it was a big crash. Yeah, I needed my goggle and, uh, to get back on the sidecar, but uh, yeah, after a few laps I got pain in the neck and in the back, so uh, yeah, I stopped. We were on uh, place 30, so uh, yeah, 30 is no points. Another crew in trouble were Bax and Stupilis. Second, that couple of uh, laps, it went from from bad to worse, and we made a, we made a crash. We we made a pretty bad uh, flip. Uh, we lose uh, so much positions. Two laps before the end, we are in the sixth position, and we try to catch uh, Giro and Sanders, but uh, I don't remember what exactly happened, but I, I fell out once again. At the end of the day, uh, we win the second moto and that was, uh, that was a great feeling again. So coming out of round one, that's how the standings look. On top of the pile, Van Lukenen. He and Ben van den Bogart starting as they mean to carry on. Reigning champions and they lead after round one. Willemsen there in second place from Etienne Bax who is just so good in the sand. Kurt Varick, brilliant for them. Further down the order, Kinge, Cops, he was a one-off one ride really, a uh, wild card I suppose you could call it. So let's take a look at this 1.635 meter track here in Talavera de la Reina, very fast, huge jumps, tough, Hard going, stony, sandy, but it will not dig out, I'm sure. Nothing like Lommel. Hi, my name's Steve Randall, and welcome to the track walk today. Here you can see the track is very sandy. It will cut up quite a, mu quite a lot, but not as much as last weekend in Lommel. Uh, behind me, you can see one of the large tabletops, just over 18 meters in length from takeoff to landing. Also, you can see around the track today, there is a lot of elevation changes, which will make things rather difficult for the passengers and drivers. Arno Dierkins having a look as we look down. Dierkins and Robbie Bax gelling well already after round one. Are they going to be fast here in Talavera? That remains to be seen. One thing is for sure here, these jumps are truly, truly spectacular. Hoping for better things this weekend, Gert van Verven and Peter Bunk. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great track. It's not a, not a 
you cannot compare it to Lommel. It's uh, completely different. You have to change the whole setup of the bike. And uh, but it's uh, it's a nice track, and I like hard pack. I prefer sand, but uh, it's good to play again in the hard pack tracks, and uh, it will be a lot of fun here this weekend. Fourth overall after round one, Kurt Varick and Loris Diders. I like uh, hard track. It's uh, um, last year. It's more luck. Lucky coming uh, sand track, it's two blazer. Uh, and here, here it's a uh, start, it's very important, I think. It's no possible bust, easy, and I think it's. I like more this track. One man who does love it here is British veteran Stuart Brown, this year reunited with Josh Chamberlain. The track's definitely good. Um, it's a completely different track, as you say, it's different going, different setup. Uh, again, down to the start. If you can get a good start and get away with the front front boys, you, you stand you know a good chance. Whereas if you if you start at the back, I think you find it hard to make the time up because everybody's doing the same sort of jumps and the same lines over the jumps. So yeah, it's, we'll see. We we never really have any. Everything's a bonus. Try and finish every race and uh, take as it comes. Really, yeah. Just just as the high p positions we can get. Group A qualifying and with 27 entered, it meant 14 lined up for this opening qualifying race and the reigning champions Marvin van Luukena, Ben van den Bogart took an immediate hole shot and flew into the lead. The pack chasing afterwards, Bax did not get a particularly good start, he was stuck behind Davy Sanders. Van Luukena's lead though was short-lived because Barely had he completed the first lap, then his hand went in the air and he was to retire with a mechanical problem. So with Van Luken gone, that would mean he would be starting the Grand Prix race from the back row. Davy Sanders and Larry Kunis were absolutely flying. Etienne Bax was chasing hard as well. Sanders was showing something of a, a new lease of life. He really was inspired with his new Finnish passenger. As Van Lukele retired, that was it, game over for him. As I said, he would start from the back row and he wouldn't be alone because, as it turned out, Daniel Willemsen was also to have his share of problems and would be joining Van Lukele on the back row. Sanders, though, in Group A was inspirational and was leading back and proving to be a very difficult obstacle to pass. The number nine crew, Sanders and Kunas, were flying lap after lap after lap. Young Jake Brown with Joe Millard in the sidecar was absolutely flying as well, as was Valentin Giro, but this pair at the front were at it hammer and tongs. Back, though, was to have a problem. Taking him out of the running, he was later to rejoin and have it to play catch up, but Sanders was absolutely inspirational. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis tried every which way to find their way past Davy Sanders. Time and time again, it looked as though they could make it alongside and get in front, but time and time again, Davy Sanders and Larry Kunas closed the door. To be leading a double world champion like this in a qualifying race, of course, which was so important to determine grid positions for the Grand Prix races proper, was something very special. And Davy Sanders made the most of it. Jake Brown and Joe Millard were really closing. They were mixed up in a fight between Giro and Christoph Santamans. But at the front, Davy Sanders and Larry Kunas held their nerve. Once passed, Bax looked as though he could put some gap between himself and Sanders, but it was still a big fight. Sanders clung on grimly, chasing the double world champion and multiple world champion passenger, Kasper Stupelis. The Latvian such a hard man and he and Etienne Bax came through a torrid season with injury in 2018 and it was so good to see them fully fit 
and fighting hard here in Spain. Suddenly, Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset, the number two crew, were in the hunt and closing backs down. It was a three-way scrap at this point in the proceedings and then Etienne Bax, with that mechanical problem, was out of the running. That left Hermans chasing Davy Sanders at the front. Bax was later to play catch-up, but his chance of finishing in the top three all but gone. Kern Hermans was impressive though, not for nothing was he the number two in the world in 2018. He and his French passenger Nicolas Mousset harried Davy Sanders all the way. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis, meanwhile, were making up ground, but at the front, the battle between Hermans and Davy Sanders absolutely raged. Further down the order, Giro was being chased hard by Jake Brown and Joe Millard, the British pair. The youngsters were going really, really well indeed, but hard on their case as well now, Etienne Bax fighting through. Bax had recovered well to get within sight of a top five place, and he was pushing. Although he would have known that uh, with only 27 riders here, the start line position was going to be fairly straightforward. He was on the case though, and very, very quickly lapping through the field. They were spectacular over the bumps, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis. As ever though, a brilliant, brilliant ride, but it was Davy Sanders and Larry Kunis who took victory in qualifying Group A. It was a spirited fight from Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset. And here we have those 12 crews confirmed. Top of the pile, as we said, Davy Sanders, Larry Kunas, Kern Hermans, Nicolas Mousset, Valentin Giro was third, Jake Brown and Joe Millard, a terrific fourth. Bax and Stupelis made it through to fifth, ahead of Santamans, Ryman, Gary Moulton, and Steve Kerwin for the UK in eighth. Brilliant. Uh, that was the goal for me, for uh, sometimes a winner in GP race or qualifying race. Uh, it's incredible, it's special for me, for us. <laughs> we had a good start, I think uh, place three or four, and uh, we climbed slowly up to the front, and um, we, we, we sat back uh, a couple times behind, uh, behind Sanders, so we, we, we needed to wait a couple laps. But uh, once we, over, we overtook him, uh, we thought we were safe now, but then uh, some small technical issue came, and we could solve it on the track, so we could we could uh, still uh, repeat our race. But uh, yeah, you know we were quite far behind, and we need to fight back. So we came back till f position five, and I think that was the best possible for now. Uh, for us, it don't means anything for tomorrow. We are we have the ninth gate pick, and I think we we're still in the first row. And uh, yeah, you know a, a lot of things happened today. So I'm 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 feeling uh, we're feeling good, and and still all chances are open. So. Yeah, okay, it's all, always a bummer if, you're, if you have a setback, but uh, I think we, we can uh, look forward for tomorrow and uh, make a solid day, hopefully. Thirteen riders left the line when Group B got underway, and it was an absolutely flying start by the Swiss brothers Christoph and Maxime Kusch. The Swiss pair absolutely shot into the lead. Chanteloup, the Frenchman, was briefly second, but then Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain rocketed past the Frenchman to set off in pursuit of the Swiss. The other 12 riders all streamed out behind. It was beginning to kick up dusty, but the Kouche brothers, showing an unprecedented level of skill, were very, very fast in these conditions. They'd have been used to downhill drops and steep climbs of big jumps, of course, on typically Swiss sort of grassland going. So whilst this was hard pack here, they were making the most of it. And they appeared to be leading Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain quite comfortably, with the rest of the field absolutely fighting for position behind. Stuart Brown rode very well here last year. He is good on this sort of going, he's brave on the jumps and he's fast on the downhills and he just shadowed Christoph Kuch as best as he could. It was all to come to nothing for the Swiss though because they were to retire just after the completion of lap one, leaving Brown in control at the front, a lead from which he was never to look back. 
Twice third in the world with Josh Chamberlain, his now passenger, Stuart Brown was shadowing the Swiss brothers and was right on their wheel at the completion of lap one. The number 22 outfit sadly was to expire as they came down to the start finish straight and it was game over for the Swiss boys, leaving Brown to play at the front and play he did. Behind him, Zeno Compalati and uh, Bastien Chopin, the French-Italian pair, were going well and having a really strong tussle with Julian Veldman. Number 17, Koiben and Dion Rietman also flying. As indeed with the number 14 crew, Gert van Verven, the man we heard from earlier in his interview. He and Peter Bonk were hard on the back of Kurt Varick and Loris Diders, and that battle raged all the way to the close, with Van Verven eventually getting the better of the Latvian-Estonian pair. Daniel Willemsen, making up ground from the back, was well down the order. He was eventually to retire from the proceedings with a mechanical problem. The rear wheel was to collapse and uh, obviously that was a victim of these big jumps, the hard going. So there you could see in that shot, Willemson's rear wheel already beginning to fall apart. He was destined to start from the back row for tomorrow's Grand Prix races. Repetto. So Daniel Willemsen and Luke Rostang joined Christoph and Maxine Kusch on the sidelines as at the front, Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain opened up a significant lead at the front, something like eight seconds at the close of the flag. Julian Veldman was chasing hard. He and Glenn Janssens, having teamed up last year, were really putting a good show in here on the Mega Two Stroke. And they were eventually to bring it home in third place. A good showing by the race winner in Belgium, Veldman already looking good for 2019 honours. Justin Koiben and Dion Rietman holding off the attentions of Van Verven. They would continue to do that all the way to the flat. With only 13 starters, the qualifying Group B became quite strung out with this mid-race bunch fighting over 5th, 6th and 7th places. Ahead of them, the Italian Compalati was going well, but right at the front there was no mistaking the fantastic performance by Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain to bring it home and take victory in qualifying Group Race B. I've said nothing of Arne Dierkins and Robbie Bax because we saw them very little in shot but it was second place for them and they had a terrific ride that bodes well for tomorrow. So with only 13 on the line, virtually everyone destined to finish. There it is then, Brown, Dierkins, Veldman, Compalati, Justin Koiben, Van Verven finished sixth. Died as seventh, seven on the bike, seventh in the race. As I said yesterday, it's all about the start. If you can make a good start, um, the thoughts are for tomorrow. Yeah, again, if we get a good start, we can we can keep in with the front runners and, and settle down and just get the best we can. To be honest with you, with, with us being the left side car, I think the right side car is going on the, on the more to the middle, to the to the outside. Whereas I'm going to go on the inside to, to try and get the corner, you know, from the inside. Where it's a different different start with the other side bike. So I think we was always going to go there, you know, even if even if it was you know lower down, and, and I think we'd have, we'd have a good position there. Well, they're all there, aren't they? But the interesting thing is that Willemsen and Van Lukena will start from the back row in the two Grand Prix races tomorrow, but the men out the front at the sharp end, Sanders and Brown, they have the pick of the spot from Hermansen, Dierkins, Giro and Veldman are flying as well. Jake Brown, Brown Jr., what 
a starting result for him. Eddie and Bax, not too shabby there. Fifth fastest in Group A, so he'll have a good pick of the grid. And it's not that important here, to be honest with you, because everybody will get away smartly. Kelly De Bruyne has done herself proud today. What a girl. Since I was five, I was uh, driving by a solo bike. And uh, three years ago, there was a, a race. Everybody can part participate with a sidecar. And uh, I will do it with a girl. And uh, the race went very well. Better than solo driving. <laughs> and uh, after that year, um, the father of the girl asked me to drive uh, the whole year with, with uh, Jitske uh, as passenger. So I did it. And um, after that, uh, I drive last year with my brother and uh, became champion in the Amateur Federation. And like that, I was starting uh, now my third year uh, on a sidecar. Yeah, Kelly is a girlfriend of Ben van Bogaert. He was my personal trainer last year, also this year. And uh, he asked me if I want to ride with Kelly. So I thought, yeah, if I can help Kelly to reach her goals, it's a fine feeling. So it's good enough for me. My friend uh, Ben van den Bogaert was a little bit pushing it and uh, he said, yeah, try it, you can learn a lot. And, uh, and also Jens, Jens said, I will drive with you when you will do some GPs. So I said, okay, we will do four. No, I don't do it, he said. I will minimum six. And then we look at uh, what was possible. And uh, yeah, we, we decided to do six uh, GPs. Incredibly, Kelly qualified in her very first Grand Prix. Amazing. That was a, a big surprise, I think, for everyone. Uh, I didn't expect it. Um, it was an amazing feeling. And how about coming from her usual sandy going to hard stuff like this? I think it's better for me because I love uh, the hard uh, tracks um, and it's completely different. We drove now a whole winter uh, in sand track uh, and now back on the hard track it's uh, difficult again. Yeah, there is no big difference. She rides good on the bike and the feeling together is really good, so it's okay. So is Kelly destined to become the highest scoring woman in this crazy sport, I wonder? First of all, we try to qualify as much as possible. And then uh, I try to took three points in the World Championship. Then uh, I can call me the best woman uh, of the world uh, ever. Yeah, that's uh, our goal. Kelly wants to be the fastest woman on the sidecar. So she has to score more than two points, I think. If I can help her with that, I'm very happy about the season. This race was a major milestone for Kelly and Jens, more than they could ever have dreamed of. It's amazing. I still can't believe it. Uh, my goal was to take three points and today I took four. So uh, it's amazing. Race day dawn in Talavera with the beautifully sunny conditions and a big crowd looking at the teams. They were busy signing autographs. Everyone wildly enthusiastic about what they knew would be coming up. Busy throng of people in the paddock and we're off to the awning, the very bright orange awning of Arna Dierkins and Robbie Bax where frantic preparation is going ahead. Actually, we're feeling great. Uh, we didn't have not so much bike time in the winter, but 
uh, last weekend uh, was not too bad, and but we actually feel more confidence on the hard pack. And in the morning we get first uh, at the best time actually. And yesterday with the qualify we were second, so yeah, we feel actually quite comfortable on the hard pack. The Spanish love their motocross. They're not big on sidecar motocross, but it's certainly a spectacle they love to see. Marvin van Luken, a reigning champion, and Ben van den Bogart. The speed was good, feeling was good, uh, everything was, was okay. We had the perfect start, uh, we were leading for a, a half lap and then the engine stopped. So uh, yeah, we, had, we have to start on the second row today, but we will uh, fight till the end. And I think uh, there's, there are a lot of possibilities on this track, so uh, we're hopeful to, uh, to have a good result today. Yeah, Talavera, a very different kettle of fish from what these guys are used to. Cerro Negro, meaning Black Hill, named after a volcano in Nicaragua. Is it going to erupt today? It might for Robbie Bax. Last minute, nervous preparations. We always see this. The countdown to race one is not far away. Riders taking their positions on the gate. Just 27 crews here in Spain. Two rows, of course, but everyone gets a start. Race one got underway, and it was an absolutely cracking start by the Frenchman Valentin Giraud, wearing his distinctive blue outfit. He was later to change clothes, which made it very difficult for the lap scorers on the commentary team. But Giro, with his German passenger Andres Haller, flew into the lead. An absolutely brilliant start for him. The British crew, the, both the Brown crews were going well. Both Jake and Stuart Brown were absolutely flying. Etienne Bax was up there as well, but it was Stuart Brown riding the number 888 who Got a brilliant, brilliant start. He was at that moment in time shadowing his son, Brown Jr., but out in front, Colin G. Giro and Andres Haller led from Etienne Bax. Then came Jake Brown. Then came Stuart Brown. Then came number two, Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset. Arnold Jerkins and Robbie Bax Looking through on the inside line, number seven, Varric and Didas, the Latvian-Estonian pair going so well here. They were good here last year. They were good in the sand in Belgium last weekend. And they were looking fast here at Talavera de la Reine. The track had been extensively watered overnight because it is hard and fast and it gets very, very dusty. But early in the early stages, Valentin Giro and Andres Haller opened up a significant lead from the chasing Bax and Stupidus pair. It was very close company, and this is a very difficult track to pass, as everyone found out. Stuart Brown had an absolute freight train of activity following him, the number 888 crew. A look over the shoulder to see how close they are. I can tell you, Stuart, they are very, very close. Valentin Giro out in front, though, absolutely loves this going. Marvin van Luken of Ben van den Bogart carrying the number one red plate. Did not have the best of starts. Uh, they were trailing Dierkins and Bax, the number 10 crew, and they were pushing and pushing and pushing, but the battle all the way up the field was frantic. These top eight crews, well, you could have got them in the back of an Arctic, I think it was so close, but at the head of the bunch, it was Stuart Brown leading everyone on the charge. Dierkins and Van Lucan are locked in that tussle, and this raged in actual fact for the best part of two or three laps with Van Lukener, Van den Bogart, the reigning champions, desperate to gain valuable points. They came away with a strong finish in, from their homeland in Belgium, 
but this was totally different going here. Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset, the number two crew, split Van Lukena and Dierkins. They were making their way up. Not for nothing are they number two in the world. The track still bearing up very, very well. Overnight watering really worked well. It didn't cut out too deeply. Kurt Varick and Loris Dido's number seven. We're right on the back then of Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain. Actually, Varick and Dido's were later to suffer a noise penalty at the end of the race, dropping them back. So all their hard work cost them at least five places at the end of the day. Noise and regulations very closely watched and policed here by the Federation. Number 17, Justin Koiben and Dion Reitman. Coming under pressure as through went Julian Feldman and Glenn Janssen's number five. An immense amount of young talent in this field. And the veterans in the field, Daniel Willemsen and Stuart Brown, the number 888, Acutely aware of the power of the young guard. Sadly, though, Julian Veldman and Glenn Janssens were to retire with a mechanical problem, and they were not the only ones, as you will see. Giro and Haller, though, magnificently riding together. Just their second Grand Prix together, and they really have clicked. The 22-year-old German looking stylish. Bax and Kasper Stupilis. Chasing them hard in second place. Later to say, Etienne Bax, that he had a slight mechanical problem. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain closing and making their way past the number 36 crew of Mike Hodges and Scott Graham. They had a cracking start, that other British crew. The British crews here in Spain acquitted themselves fantastically well. Not least of all, young Jake Brown, who is really growing in stature obviously keen to follow in his father's footsteps but this man following in the wheel tracks of the guys in front of him and uh, further down the field number 111 Daniel Willemsen making his way up with Luke Rostang this year the number 111 didn't have the best start the multiple champion but it was victory for Valentin Giro and Andres Haller and that was a terrific ride for them Bax and Stupilis coming over the line past the number 32 crew. They chased hard. That was a good result for second place. Stuart Brown, Josh Chamberlain, third. They went well here last year. They love the hard pack going and uh, fought their way up. There it is then confirmed. Hero, leader, winner of that. Bax, Brown, Hermans, Van Lukener in fifth place, Sanders, Compolati, Van Verven, Willemsen, and behind him, Varek, who was penalized five places for a noisy exhaust ahead of Durkins with a loose radiator. I feel good, for sure. Uh, yeah, we, we did the best race. We took the old shot and we stay in the front all the race. Um, yeah, the speed was good. We took the fastest lap time in the race, I think. Caspar uh, and Etienne came back to us in the middle of the race, but uh, yeah, we keep fighting and we was able to 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 keep the the, the lead to the end. We had a quite a good start actually, position three in the first corner, and uh, yeah, that that was really good because this track is, is it's difficult to to overtake somebody. And um, after three, four laps, we, we find out a problem with the rear suspension. Uh, it's not an excuse, but uh, it, it was the way it is. And uh, so we could follow him, but we could not make any attack. Uh, I had the feeling that after 10, 12 minutes, we were faster for one point. Uh, but then we came with some back markers. He made a gap and then he was riding really smooth and, 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 and keep, keep the pace. So we could not come any closer at that po point. And then, uh, then we choose to to not go crazy and take our second position. For this moment, uh, we take the leadership in the, in the World Championship. Okay, we still have a second race to come, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, we, need to, we need to look to it like this. The season is long and we, we want to take it easy and collect our points week by week. 
The local federation here in Spain working very closely with the FIM, the governing body of motorcycle sport, and our man on the ground here for the local authority, Antonia Alia Portea. Well, it's a, it's a big challenge for me because I, as you may, may know that I come from this, this club from the very beginning, so, and I've done most of the, the, the stuff here, and from here I just moved into the Spanish Federation and from the Spanish Federation into the, the CMS. Uh, obviously, it's, everything is different, so there is more uh, political and socializing uh, activity in, uh, in my new role. But also, I have to uh, manage the, all the, the, the disciplines within the, the CMS, and this is also a big challenge, just trying to, 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 to make a few changes, just following the, the path T Tony Skillington set. And we're going to, from there, this is our starting point, and we see how far we can get. Well, very enthusiastic about the sidecar cross here in Spain, and that's lucky for us, really, because the crews love coming down here in the sunshine. Everyone getting ready, then, for race two coming up, and that was going to be a cracker. Valentin Giro had new livery on as well, gone from blue to red. Brown always, yellow and red easy to spot. Last minute nervous preparations. What would happen this time? Well, you just wait and see. Thirty minutes and two laps ahead of these guys, and when the gateway went down, it was an astonishingly good start by young Jake Brown and Joe Miller. They shot into the lead. The left-hand sidecar seeming to work well off the line here at Talavera de la Reina. They were absolutely flying. They had a great lead ahead of Davy Sanders, the number nine crew. The rest of the 27 all round safely. It was a good start. Those first turns very difficult, but everyone round safely. Brown holding on to his lead, further down the order. Bax didn't get the best of starts, so he had a bit of work to do. Stuart Brown as well was boxed in the middle of the traffic. Jake Brown holding off from Davy Sanders. Arna Dierkins and Robbie Bax in third place, having fixed their loose radiator from the previous outing. Mechanical reliability, a really essential part of this and it did seem to me that with so long in the close season over the winter, how can we have mechanical breakdowns this early in the season? Attention to detail is of paramount importance to make sure that the bike keeps going. Davy Sanders just so, so brilliant with his new Finnish passenger, Larry Kunas who rode last year with his elder brother Riku. The Belgian Finn pairing have gelled extremely well in 2019. They show well in Belgium and they're showing well here on hard pack. Sanders from Dierkins went through. Giro had another good start. Not as good as last time, but he was right in the mix here. Backs fighting up through the pack. Van Lukener also nearly throwing Ben van den Bogart out of the cycle. Oh, that bump caught him unaware, straight legged as we call it in the trade, and that catapulted him about a meter in the air, but his hands were still firmly on the handrail and he stayed in. So Van Lukener, Ben van den Bogart having a real battle here with Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset as they did all through last season, finishing numbers one and two in the world. As this race unfolded, it was to become an absolute cracker at the front. Jerkins got the better of Davy Sanders. Kern Hermans was closing, and we then had a five outfit freight train 
Just look how close they were. Van Luken are then right on the back of the red-shirted Giro and Haller. How long would it be before Van Luken had made his way past? Well, there was your answer. He was by. He was then on the back of Sanders and Kunas, the number nine crew, who were going so, so quickly. And at the head of this pack, Arne Jerkins and Robbie Bax. Van Luken looked as though he meant busy business, and Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis, they were playing catch-up, but they were right in the sights then of those five ahead of them, and they knew all they had to do was wind them in. They kept the pressure on. Jerkins at the head of the bunch. And then through went Van Lukena. So Van Lukena was then on the back of the number 10, Arna Dierkins, who had so much to gain by a strong finish in this race. Van Lukena, Van den Bogart were right there with him. They were on the inside. Could Dierkins hold the line? Well, side by side, they went up the hill. Dierkins over the top of the hill, made a lunge on the inside. He took the inside line after the next jump, down towards the left-handed bend inside of Van Lukener and cartwheeled over mercifully, not taking Van Lukener with him, but a bit too much corner entry speed there. And Robbie Bax was to suffer rib injuries and take a short trip to the hospital. Our best wishes go to him and hopefully we will see him again next weekend in Holland. Meanwhile, Sanders and Giro were having a scrap. Van Lukena was on their case, and right now on the back of the bunch were Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis. Their fight through proving to be beneficial here. Van Lukena looking every which way to find a path past. This is the most difficult track to pass on. There appears to be only one fast racing line, and Davy Sanders was on it. Giro was on it too. Kern Hermans was on it, and then came Van Lukena. How could he find a way past? Well, the rest, as they say, would be history. But he would know, because of his pit board, that Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis were closing him down. Hermans had Giro climbing all over him. The, the uh, French rider with his German passenger having had such a brilliant race in race one, was repeating the performance here. If he'd had a better start, it would be a different story. Sanders and Hermans, with Hermans taking the inside line and chopping through. Masterful display by Kern Hermans and Nicola Musset, carrying the number two and dropping back, looking as though the bike is sick. Valentine, Valentin Giro and Andris Haller obviously had a problem. They were slowing. Were they able to bring it home? Well, you will see. It was not good news for the Frenchman. Such a pity after such a brilliant, brilliant ride. Bax, though, was on the back of Van Lukener and pushing hard all the way. Was he able to make it past? Well, he's nothing if not a trier. Kasper Stupilis, multiple world champion passenger, just giving Etienne Bax the benefit of his expert riding and co-driving here. Stuart Brown was also riding consistently and there it was, game over. The mega had expired for number four, Valentin Giro and Andres Haller. Their race was over, and that was an absolute tragedy for them. And then there were three. Bax then looking for a way past. Davy Sanders proving to be a difficult fish to catch. And it was victory for Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset. They brought it home ahead of this chasing bunch. Van Lukena, Sanders, and Bax. Well, we'll confirm the result. What a great, great ride that was. Marvin van Lukener and Ben van den Bogart did indeed get second place, but victory, Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset, best of the bunch. Absolutely brilliant. Sanders third, Bax fourth, Brown fifth, 
Julian Veldman in sixth place ahead of Compilati, the Italian who's had a really, really good weekend. Jake Brown well in the top ten ahead of Santamons. This region famous for its pottery and its presentation time. The second uh, race was good. Start on the second row. We came immediately to the to the front, and uh, yeah, with some incident, we, we lost uh, the first place in the in the second heat. Eddie and Bax Kaspers Stupolis, second overall. Second moto, yeah, it was just the start again. It was a really bad start, and uh, and the starts uh, we need to take that get that under control. Okay, we fight our way back to, to fourth position, uh, but we stuck there and uh, yeah, uh, we just missed out. I think we have the same points now with Van Luggenen and uh, you know, uh, hopefully, yeah, I'm, I must be happy, but I'm, uh, I want more, you know, I want more. But no mistaking victory here. Cohn Hermans and Nicola Musset, race one is in race two. They're looking good. Feeling really good uh, in the first heat. Uh, I lost my red break, so uh, we could not finish on third place. Uh, yeah, the second heat was, uh, I think, was a good battle for uh, everyone. And yeah, we did win the second heat and also the overall. So uh, yeah, we are really happy. Joint leaders then, Bax and Van Luken are 80 points each from Hermans. Willemsen is still there in fourth. Brown fifth. Joint with Sanders on 58, Giro 53 despite breaking down, Varek, Veldman and Dierkins, they're all in the hunt. Roll on Holland, that comes up next. Well, it's been a fantastic Spanish Grand Prix here in Talavera de la Riena. The Black Hill, we hope you like the Black Hill. We move next weekend to Alderbrook in Holland for round three. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. From me, Barry Nutley, bye-bye for now. See you soon. Some men see a path that was laid out before them and ask why. I dream of a path that never was and ask why not? We never stop, so go on when you finish And even when we bleed, still believe that we can win this We got what's underneath, you're all about that image We never even stop at the top, no limits Champions, and we're the champions Williamson is 10 times the world champion. Bax and Stupolis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Luken has certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.